When diagnosing any fuel system problems that you may be having, it's important to know how each component works and its relation to all the other components in the fuel system. I figured a good place to start would be right here at the engine, tracing out the fuel system. We'll go all the way from uh, the inlet tube, which is actually down here, both inlet and uh, return line are right down here from the fuel tank back there. So they come up under the chassis, up and over here, and then you have your inlet line right here, goes into the fuel filter. And uh, this is actually pressurized at 120 PSI from the pump that's in the tank. So when it reaches this point, there's 120 PSI pressure behind it. It then goes in through the filter and then goes this way to the inlet side of the fuel pump. Um, and the fuel pump return line is on the, it's right below here and then goes right back into here. The return line actually has two fittings on it. You have one for a dedicated return line from the pump and then a dedicated return line for the rail. Um, all of the injectors all dump off all their excess fuel uh, and then it goes around to a banjo fitting on the bottom of the back of the rail back there. Each individual injector is fed from a common rail, hence the name, all maintaining a constant pressure. And then the rail pressure is controlled electronically by a valve all the way on the back of the rail back there. Essentially all that does is bleed off pressure constantly to maintain a, a constant pressure in the rail. The fuel pump has three pistons in it. It's driven uh, by a central cam, which is driven off of the timing chain. That cam swings around and pushes those pistons up at different times in order to generate constant pressure. There's also a series of check valves in there, um, which are essentially just uh, uh, steel balls that seat against the cast iron housing of the pump. But when these pumps go bad, it's either one of two things. The pistons themselves and the rings on the pistons do not, like, they just don't wear out. They're, they're incredibly hardy, incredibly hard, uh, and they just don't wear out. But what does wear out is the check ball seats on the pump. Those check ball seats, when they start to wear, will cause a low fuel pressure error code in the computer. It'll generate completely at random, uh, not very high intervals either. I had the same exact problem before I replaced this pump about a year ago, and uh, it would throw it about maybe once a week. It would just throw a low fuel pressure code and throw the car into limp mode and I spent quite a bit of time uh, you know, trying to troubleshoot and diagnose what exactly was causing that problem but it was ultimately the pump. A second problem that happens with these pumps, and all these problems by the way are not common, these are actually very reliable pumps. The second problem is that some of the seals, some of the uh, o-ring seals that are in this pump will deteriorate and shrink and actually break away and you will have external leaks on this pump spraying outside of the pump. That's obviously more of a catastrophic failure that'll cause your belt to deteriorate and slip uh, and may cause you to be stuck on the side of the road, but it is a, a failure item to look out for. Moving up from the pump now, we have the fuel rail. As I mentioned earlier, the fuel rail uh, is electronically controlled as far as the pressure it holds by the fuel pressure sensor right here and then the fuel pressure regulator on the back of the rail. Constant pressure is fed from the rail into the lines through to the injector. Now I'm gonna go further in depth in the injectors a little later on because I think these injectors deserve their own attention to detail as far as how they work and uh, understanding them. There is a couple ways to check injector health. Uh, one of them I'll get into when I take the injector out and explain these a little more. But the second one is actually done with the injector on the car and that is called a leak off test. Now it's a very common test on really any common rail diesel and it is no different on this car. I ended up making my own uh, leak off kit, which was essentially just some vinyl tube that slides over the end of this uh, return line fitting on the injector here. Plug off this line all the way in the back after the last injector because it is under pressure like I said. But you put vinyl tubing over here and then you let the engine run for a certain period of time and then you inspect how much fuel is in each vinyl tube. Now there is a scientific measurement of how much these injectors are supposed to leak off over a certain period of time. I've never really messed with that because these injectors are almost never changed at the same time. They're changed independently. So if injector three, you know, throws a code or something, that'll be replaced at that time, but they won't replace all the other injectors. So the likelihood that all of them are going to be worn down, that they're leaking off excessively at the same time is very unlikely. I'm not going to show you a leak off test on this video. I'm going to link in the description below another leak off test video that I made probably a year or so ago. Uh, that link for that will be down in the description. What you're essentially looking for in a leak off test is you're checking to make sure that the fuel leak off between all the injectors is no more or no less than 20% of each other. So you don't want the fuel higher or lower 
on any of the injectors by 20% than any of the other injectors. So let's say, you know, all your injectors are, uh, after a leak off test, the tubes are filled halfway up, but injector number three is filled all the way up and spilling over the tube. That's a clear sign that that injector is leaking off excessively and has uh, excessive internal wear. Now, obviously, if one of these injectors is throwing a code, uh, that is caused from the solenoid failure. It's either an intermittent failure or a constant failure. If it's a constant failure of the solenoid, you'd, you'd feel a, a significant missing in the engine. You'd know that right off the bat and it would throw a check engine light. But the majority of failures with these injectors are actually mechanical and will not throw a code in your computer. The next thing we're gonna get into is what's called IMA coding. Each one of these injectors has to be programmed into the car's ECU. Each injector has its own unique set of characters here that uh, determines I'm not exactly sure what, it's never been clearly explained to me, but it has something to do with the uh, with the specs of each injector. Each injector is slightly different, whether it's mechanically or electronically, and because of how fast these things fire, the computer needs to know if it needs to fire one of these solenoids before another or after another in order to make sure that the injection event is taking place at exactly the right time. Now speaking of how fast these things fire, these injectors will actually fire up to five injection events per combustion cycle. As with all diesels, the number one cause of failure for any of the components is always contaminated fuel. That is the number one cause. So whether you're opening this fuel system up to work on it, to, like I'm about to do, take an injector out, or to uh, you know work on the fuel filter, to change that, to work on the pump, anything, you always need to make sure that you are plugging off the ports to prevent any type of dust, debris, contamination, anything from getting into the rail, into the injectors, into the fuel lines, anything. All of these components will last a very long time, hundreds of thousands of miles, without needing to be replaced, if you maintain this filter. Uh, now this filter is recommended you change it every 20,000 miles or two oil changes. I do it religiously every two oil changes. I'll swap this thing out. And uh, these things are quite expensive from the dealership. They're around 50 to $75 depending on what kind of discount you get. Uh, but if you order them online on places like FCP Euro, you can actually get this filter, I believe, for around $20. And if you buy it from FCP, it's a lifetime warranty. So when you buy it again, you send the old one back and they give you a refund. You'll never have to pay for that part again other than return shipping. The way that this injector essentially works is you have fuel flow coming in here and it splits two ways. You have your feed going to your nozzle, which is the diesel that's actually injected into the cylinder for combustion. And then you have diesel that's sent up here to the body uh, that's actually used as a hydraulic working fluid. Um, you have in here what's called a multiplier valve. That multiplier valve takes the hydraulic fluid coming in from the pump and then uses it uh, to actually actuate the nozzle itself, um, or the needle from the nozzle itself. So what the solenoid actually does is it opens and closes the multiplier valve, which then opens the nozzle. So the, the solenoid itself does not actually actuate the nozzle uh, independently. It does so as kind of a surrogate. It doesn't do it directly. So what will happen with, with injector failure is if that multiplier valve it has a tiny, tiny little ball on it, uh, that works as a check valve. When that ball or the ball seat wears, it will cause that multiplier valve to constantly leak. And when that multiplier valve constantly leaks, it may actually never open the nozzle, or it may actually cause the nozzle to stay open all the time, injecting fuel all the time. Either way, when that ball seat wears and you have excessive leak off, this injector needs to be replaced. It cannot be, uh, it cannot be fixed. Now these injectors, when they need to be replaced, you do not have to use OM648 injectors. The OM648 was actually used a lot less around the world than the OM647 and the OM646, which are the five cylinder and four cylinder versions of this engine. The OM647, which is the five cylinder version, was actually used much more in the sprinters in the United States. Now, being commercial vehicles, you can get, these parts are a lot more readily available and they're available from aftermarket sources. Uh, so you can actually get remand injectors made for the Sprinter that are 100% compatible with this engine. And they're a third to a quarter of the price. This injector priced from the dealership is, you know, five, six hundred dollars uh, less if you have a fleet discount uh, or an installer discount. And you can get these things online for the OM648 
for you know 400 450 somewhere around in there i've seen them down as low as 350 but the om647 injectors those injectors you can actually get for around 150 bucks they are identical to this they have a different nozzle part number but if you actually calculate the uh, horsepower rating for the om647 and compare it to the om648 dividing by the uh, displacement per cylinder it has identical horsepower rating per cylinder which means that the fuel flow rate for these injectors are identical um, i've been running an om647 injector on this car for about three years now on cylinder number six and it's run flawlessly this engine runs amazing so these injectors are definitely replaceable with the om647s so next time you need to replace an injector go ahead and check prices for an OM647 because you may save a significant amount of money.